Hi friends! Today is gonna be the TBR takedown for the months of March, April, and May. If you are new here, the TBR Takedown is a game that I've been playing, trying to get my physical unread TBR shelf from a really high number down to something more manageable, probably around 50. Um, we haven't been here for a few months. Um, we're currently in the lost months filming all of the, um, I mean, technically right now it's June, but I'm filming for March to May. Um, typically I do these once a month, but as I was not here March through May, we gotta get caught up. One thing I will be doing differently this time, I have a lot of arcs that I read during this time period, and typically I will like mention them and say, you know, check out um, like my past arc recently read vlog, but I don't have any of those ready yet. So this is just gonna be the books that I read March through May that were not arcs. Um, any arcs that I read or DNF during that time frame will be in I think two videos coming up uh, next month. Now some of those arcs I have since purchased copies of so let's start with um, my purchases for the month. So the first book that we're going to talk about I am not putting on my physical unread TBR even though it isn't technically a physical copy of a book and it's not an arc. Um, that is Vampire Problems by India Watson. So <laughs> India reached out to me last year in, I don't know, March or April, somewhere is around in there, yeah, um, asking if I would be interested in reading a copy of this, which I was. Um, it is about a vampire somewhere around her mid 400s, is a perpetual student. Um, despite having been around since before the Salem Witch Trial, she has no idea what she wants to do with the rest of her eternity. Here it needs to solve her lectures, non-murder, work out who would want to kill someone who can't die and someone somehow make it through her degree. She reluctantly drags along her over-enthusiastic friend, a grumpy werewolf who runs the local coffee shop and a teenage witch hellbent on revolution. All of those things. So we know it's got demons, we know it's got werewolves, we know it's got witches, we know it's got vampires, we know... Like, there's a lot of things in there that I really like. The problem is this book got lost in the mail, and I got it this May. So we're talking, in 2021, she was like, hey, do you want to read this? And I was like, absolutely. And then it was postmarked from the country that she sent it from, which was not the United States, in last year. And then it got postmarked in the United States in, like, the beginning of May of this year. <laughs> Um, so I do plan to read this. I'm going to try to read it this month um, because it is fairly short, but um, I've already I sent her a message the other day and was like, guess what finally showed up at my door? <laughs> uh, so yes, I'm not going to count this one um, on my physical shelf because I didn't technically purchase this one. One that I did purchase and I do have to count is The City of Dusk by Tara Sim. This was in my adult unplugged book box. I believe that's what this one was. I think this was my last one from them before I, I canceled. Uh, so I have this giant behemoth of a book. I don't know what it's about. Uh, every realm there's a god, for every god there's an heir, and for every heir there is a price. I'm here for it. Looks pretty. Looks like it might be my speed. So we here. I also picked up the first and second book in the Spirit Hunters series by Ellen O, which is Spirit Hunters and Spirit Hunters The Island of Monsters. I read these last year, really enjoyed them. Um, if you've been here before, you know that I have a love affair with Midgrade Spooky. Also starting to love YA Spooky, um, but Midgrade Spooky just hits different, y'all. Um, so I purchased these and the third book in the series will be coming out later this year and I am very excited for it. Speaking of YA spooky, Rules for Vanishing by Kate Alice Marshall. This was one of my favorite books of 2021. It is creepy, it is spooky, it is just all of the things and I didn't own a copy so I felt like I needed to. I also picked up Ten Truths and a Dare by Ashley Elson. This was an arc that I read last year that I really enjoyed and I already own the first book of the series um, which is Ten Blind Dates. 
and so I wanted to go ahead and pick up this one as well so I have a matching set. <laughs> Speaking of matching sets and arcs, I also got When Sparks Fly and Starry Eyed Love. These are the first and second books in the Spark House trilogy by Helena Hunting. These were arcs that I read last month, really enjoyed. Again, those will be in the upcoming arc video, um, but I liked them enough that I wanted to have my own copies. Also an arc that I read last month but had already pre-ordered a copy of is Adult Assembly Required by Abby Waxman. This is a follow-up to this is a follow-up to The Bookish Life of Nina Hill, which I recently learned is actually a follow-up to Garden of New Beginnings. I think is what it's called. So apparently there was a book before Nina Hill that I should have read and did not. The books I'm gonna go back in time and read. Absolutely. I did this because I love the story so very very much. I didn't love it as much as Nina Hill but as it was an arc from last month you can see that in a video next month. All of my thoughts. I think that's it. That is everything that I bought this month. Technically in May but you know what I mean. I did not have any DNFs for the month that were not arcs. I did DNF some arcs. There's going to be a whole recently read arcs that's just a DNF edition. One thing I did do this month that I will not talk about at length but do just want to say very quickly a lot of you know that my March, April, May time frame was not the happiest times that I've ever had and I could not focus on new trauma um, and I felt like reading so I ended up rereading a seven book series about wizards and that was the only thing that got me through. So let's talk about the books that I did actually read in the May through March. These are in order of rated lowest to highest. Uh, there's not very many of them so let's hop in. The first is An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green. I read this as part of mine and Kate's AuthorTube chat book club. I think that goes out. Let me look at my content calendar. Technically um, you'll be seeing this on Thursday the 23rd. So the 21st was our chat about the book. Um, if you want to know more of my full thoughts you can see there. Um, but basically this book is about a girl who sees this statue in New York City and she posts a video of it and it ends up going completely viral because the statue didn't just show up in New York City. It also showed up in different places all around the world and no one knows where they came from, how they got here and she kind of blows up and virally and the book kind of follows her and like the viralness and what happens to content creators when they go viral and how things can change and, and all of that. So I give this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It was a bit slow for me but overall I did enjoy it. I did consider DNFing around like the 30% mark because I wasn't having a great time. It was real slow and I was kind of bored and I did not like any of the characters and I had a lot of friends who were like no like keep reading it because you'll like the human experiment part of it and that is definitely the part of it that I did enjoy. There was a lot of relationship drama and the characters that I didn't like but weirdly I liked the voice of the story. Um, so what my notes actually say is the way the story was told and how April May felt about a lot of things especially toward the latter half of the book was a bright look at humanity while also having a cold dead sarcastic heart and I 100% get that. That's me like that's I can have a bright outlook on the world but I'm also very sarcastic very um, dark about things and I have a dark humor so like I could relate to the voice but not necessarily to the character's choices that she was making. That being said I think Hank did a fantastic job of writing female characters who felt real um, especially as a middle-aged white dude like I think my note said there was no flouncing bosoms to be found so I appreciate that he was able to write female characters well. It's a low bar but uh, I appreciate that. We then have Burden Falls by Kat Ellis. I give this a 3.75 out of 5 stars. It's about a girl who comes from like a rich family who a lot of her family members have died and they believe that her family is cursed that when they see this ghost that that person will soon die and her family had to like sell their ancestral home and she moves into like this little windmill, sawmill, watermill. I don't know. And she moves into, they move into this building that's been uninhabited for a long time. Um, and the family of the guy who hit her parents in a car accident and killed her parents is the family that buys the house and moves in. 
uh, which is weird and basically like they're the only ones that would actually buy the house because everyone thinks their family's cursed so like he was kind of doing her a favor but also kind of not. It definitely has the same creepy vibes as Harrow Lake by Cat Ellis if you have read that but it has a much more defined ending which I appreciated. I stayed up way past my bedtime reading this one. Um, I was sending um, Marco Polo messages to my friend Julie who has read the book already um, at like 1am just like absolutely squealing about what was happening in the book and the plot and the way things were going and just like as I was figuring things out like messaging her like oh my god I cannot believe that XYZ I know it's gonna happen like this is what's gonna happen I know it I could feel it in my bones and then like it would happen and I'd be like oh my god I can't believe I actually got that right like oh my god like everything's happened like I was freaking the fuck out at 1am um, sending Julie messages and just having a fantastic time and it has been a really long time since I've actually felt that way about a book so I really appreciated that. All the YA spooky, all the time, loving it, here for it, this was fantastic. We then had The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. I gave this a 3.75 out of 5 stars. I had literally no clue what this book was about when I went into it. Um, I literally just picked it up because I needed to read a Gaiman for a um, challenge that I was doing and also I, one of my work in progress is, I was like, the perfect title for this book would be The Graveyard Book, but there's already a graveyard book, so my working title is The Other Graveyard Book, so I felt like I needed to read the actual graveyard book. It felt like a thing I should do. This book hurt me more than I had expected it to. It is um, about a boy whose family is murdered when he's very young, and he ends up wandering into a graveyard and the ghosts in the graveyard decide to take him in and raise him. Um, they give him, I don't remember exactly what it's called, but they give him like abilities that you or I wouldn't be able to have. Um, kind of it's like they give him permission to use the powers of the graveyard to do things that he needs to do and that's in order to protect him from the person who murdered his family. I do think a lot of this book was just like kind of boring and it was very much like a character study more than like a plot driven book but the final chapter absolutely broke me like I was sobbing in tears just n I mean not having a good time but having a good time. It is just this sad but moving but beautiful take on growing up and you know figuring out who you are and just the way that people change throughout um, time periods in their life which if you know about me and if you've been here before um, is something that I really love in books so it was it takes place I think from like obviously he's he's a baby at the beginning and then I think when he ends the book it's like he's 16 I think it was a very interesting book there was characters that I was not expecting the plot wasn't like super masterful there was like a plot twist that I had already figured out but I think it, the character study of it was definitely very interesting and I did enjoy it. I do want to touch quickly on Steelheart by Brandon Sanderson. I give this a four out of five stars. It is a what I would consider a YA sci-fi story because it deals with superheroes. I have a vlog on reading this that I will link in the description box down below um, but I did really enjoy Sanderson's writing. I like the way that he um, created this world and like how we were put into it and just the world building aspect of it. Uh, it was a fun book and I definitely will continue on with the series even though I've heard some terrible things about the last book in the series. And now we'll be talking at length about Witchlings by Clarabelle A. Ortega so if you have no interest in that be prepared for 10 minutes of me raving about this book. Okay. Witchlings I gave a perfect 5.25 out of 5 stars. It is the absolute perfect mid-grade spooky for me. There is nothing that I think anyone could have done to this book to make it better. It is absolute perfection. That being said, I do want to mention that if you are looking at picking this up for your child, it does deal, and I made a list so that I wouldn't forget anything, it contains grief, death of a sibling, child abuse, poverty, and hunger. Um, so uh, if those are things that you're worried about, you know, giving to your child, you may want to read it yourself first before you decide if your child is ready for it, because it is there. I loved every minute of this book, and I think what I love about this book even more um, having reread the books that I reread in the past few months is that Clarabelle, you know, has said that this book was meant as a, a queer inclusive story for 
those of us who loved that seven book wizard series and I'm literally trying to, not to cry right now which is weird because I'm talking about a mid-grade book and it's making me cry and I'm emotional live in the dream y'all um and I think this book did exactly that I think this book gives you the world building the magic the the found family aspect the just absolute heart of things it hit a lot of buttons for me obviously the story itself because we haven't even talked about that uh the story is about three young girls um our main character is seven she is headed off to the i think it's called uh the black moon sorting i need to reread the book because i've lost a lot of the terms since i read it um but essentially all of the kids in this village that are in the same year um they're all sorted into covens and there are there's only so much space for so many kids in each coven the leftovers are considered um very i guess like their world considers them to be spares like they are i mean they're the spare coven so they are looked down upon they are not allowed to have the magics that the other covens have they a lot of times are purchased as kind of like indentured servants for the richer families they are you know nobody wants to be one and so seven is going into this day hoping that she and her best friend will be sorted into a house together and they have a house in mind that they want to be sorted into and we get to see this sorting of it, it's magical it's not there you know the it all happens at once and like one pendant that like they all wear these pendants and one pendant will light the color of that house and then the rest of the house will be called and then the next house will light one pendant and then the rest will be called and then we're you know seven standing there and she gets nothing and then there's her a new girl that she just met and her arch nemesis are left in this coven of spares and if you as a coven do not come together uh, you will lose your magic altogether and because it's her and this girl she doesn't know and her arch nemesis their coven starts to falter and she requests to be given an impossible task and the impossible task is um well it's an impossible task it's pretty clearly obvious what that is basically if you're able to sir if you're able to pass the impossible task um then your coven will be set but they would still be lowly spares and would not have the great life that they could have um if they had been put into a different coven if they don't pass the impossible test there's a different punishment for um, each impossible test that's set so these girls are set an impossible test to trap track defeat um this monster that has been attacking their village all this is in the synopsis this is not a spoiler it is i think it's very age appropriate but it's also you know something that like hits really deep with me a 35 year old woman as we've seen but the most fun is like if you enjoy the book you can go to clarabelle's website and she has a sorting quiz and you can be sorted into your coven and i obviously did that the minute i finished the book and I am here to tell you that I was sorted into a coven that is more right for me than anything that other wizard series could have ever have done. So I was sorted into Moth House and we're going to talk about Moth House for a minute. I, you don't care, but I don't care if you care. This is my channel and I'll do what I want. So Moth House is, motto is mysterious, morbid, dependable friends. Um, their colors are black and gray. Their house gem is an obsidian blah 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 whatever okay cool so like there's a whole paragraph and I'm just gonna read this to you because it's fantastic in touch with their emotions and with special insight into the other side moth house members are sensitive obsessed with all things ghostly are chaotic good witches uh will bake you delicious cake in the shape of a casket to celebrate a special occasion which I've actually fucking done before thank you very much <laughs> hold your hand and cry with you in a cemetery if you're feeling sad or help you hex your bully once they've let you in their life they will do anything for you so long as it doesn't include their greatest fear because while they may not be afraid of death public speaking is their one great enemy no doubt they are great listeners but do not open up often um, choosing to keep their own problems to their self their closed off nature can sometimes lead them to losing their temper it takes a long time for them to reach their limit but they are wrong too many times they do not forgive easily 
uh, love to express themselves by writing and excel at writing stories, poems, or songs, curious about the afterlife and often have ghost companions as they're able to learn earn their trust a lot easier than other witches can they get easily distracted and daydream often their taste in clothing and media aligns with their house traits and moth house members love to listen to moody music wear all black and scare themselves with horror films i'm telling you guys this is like me to a fucking t um their house members are a tight-knit group that tends to be to keep them to themselves but with time can be welcoming of other coven members especially if they're being ostracized their strengths are patient trustworthy and sensitive and professions that are often seen by people in the moth house are uh, they become authors, musicians, undertakers, university professors, or ghost liaisons, which obviously I would love to be a ghost liaison, but cannot because I don't know that ghosts like me. Uh, cemetery maintenance is also a favored career path. So like, I don't know if you know me, but if you do, you know that that hits so many of, of my me, like it is my personality to a fucking T. Um, so I don't know what kind of sorcery Clarabelle A. Ortega is doing, but her sorting quiz sorted me into a fucking coven that is me and wrote a book that hit me in every possible, like hit all of my fucking buttons. And is just one of the best things that I've ever seen in my entire life. And it's fantastic and I fucking love it. Okay, we can move on to other things now. There's only one thing left and that's unhauls. I am unhauling All Your Perfects by Colleen Hoover because I've decided that Colleen Hoover is not for me. And so I haven't read this. It's going out the door. It comes off of our list, which makes us an even 117 again. It didn't go anywhere, um, but I'm working on some projects that should be helping my book count. But honestly, I'm just happy to be reading again. I'm happy to have read a favorite book of the year. Once we get in the arcs, there might be a couple favorite books of the year. I, I have been having a great time um, the last like two weeks reading. Okay, not two weeks, because the last two weeks I've just been reading the Atlas Six and I'm really struggling. Uh, but the two weeks before that, I was just having a great time. Uh, so if you've read any of these books or if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please hit me up down below. I would love to talk to you about them. Um, if you have read Witchlings and you take the quiz, please let me know what coven you're in because I need to know. Uh, obviously, I need to know all of the Clarabelle A. Ortega things, all the things. Like, let's do this. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related videos a couple times a week. If you don't want to miss anything I have going in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye. My heart is so hollow, but as an echo, it's